So now in this video, we have the uh, 555 timer wired as a voltage tripler. The power is off right now, now it is on. As you can see, these uh, four LEDs are in series right there. Each one of them has a forward voltage of about three volts. They do conduct a little bit at uh, lower voltages, but uh, when current's really flowing through them, you can expect three volts. So we got uh, three, six, nine, about 12 volts we're gonna need before we can uh, really light these up. I forgot to write the three volt uh, LEDs above there. If you use uh, like red LEDs, you're, you're gonna get a lot more current, um, which is a problem for this circuit because we are probably maxing out the current of this shot key diode. But we're getting more voltage out uh, with the shot key diodes than we would have with rectifier diodes. That's why I added them into this circuit. So now really quickly, we're gonna look at uh, the tripler circuit here. I've covered basically all this stuff in earlier videos, but I haven't really used the uh, shot key diodes. Um, we were doing mostly voltage doublers, so we're gonna do another voltage tripler here where I added the shot key diode. I didn't research it ahead of time. I found out uh, looking at the data sheet that these can only handle a continuous current, these uh, 1N6263. I just have them from a kit. Uh, Joe knows electronic semiconductor kit. They can only handle about 15 milliamps of current continuously. And uh, so since this is a tripler, we do lose some uh, voltage from the diodes, but uh, otherwise it's you're getting about uh, three times the voltage out that you put in. Therefore, you need to provide about three times as much current in as you get out. So I did some simple math. A third of uh, 15 milliamps is five milliamps. So hopefully that uh, keeps the average current through there. Uh, no more than 15 milliamps. Maybe we are going a little bit high. But in any case, 555 timer in A stable mode. The high time is set by two resistors, uh, 10K resistors, and a 10 nanofarad capacitor. It's gonna charge pretty close to instantly almost. And uh, then uh, when the output goes low, it discharges through one 10K resistor. So it's gonna be low for uh, about a third of the time, and it's gonna be high for about two thirds of the time. We have here, um, I had to basically add these uh, transistors to keep the circuit from uh, losing voltage because this uh, 555 timer, the NE555 timer, can only get up to, uh, if you need current, probably 3.5 volts out of five. It falls about a volt and a half short when it's powering a load. Without a load, I think we get to like four volts. Um, but in any case, that would uh, be more loss throughout the uh, circuit. So instead, we're gonna use that to switch the uh, enhancement mode MOSFETs here. So this is P channel, that is N channel right there. A lot of people don't like those uh, schematic symbols that I'm using right there. They get really angry, but I took them from the book, The Art of Electronics. They show all kinds of symbols for uh, both of these uh, transistors. And this is the uh, simplest one, other than I circle it, I don't think they do. And I uh, labeled where, which uh, pins those are right there. But in uh, any case, I have BS250s. I ordered them from DigiKey, and uh, they seemed like the best value. And a 2N7000, I got that from the Joe Knows Electronic Semiconductor Kit, as I did with the uh, Shockey Dials right there. I got them both from that kit. I recommend that kit if you have all the basic components and you want a bunch of semiconductor components. It's a nice collection. So, they don't have LED diesel in that kit. So in any case, we have it so when the output is high, which is most of the time, then the capacitor is charging. That's why I really like that it's high most of the time. So high in is low out. So these two transistors are wired as an inverter. It's not a power inverter where you take DC and you get 120 volt AC out or something. It's a digital inverter. High input is a low output as far as the transistors are concerned. So that charges the capacitor. That's why I like that it is uh, most of the time right there that the output is high there of the 555 then the output of the transistor is low that capacitor charges for a longer time and then the output goes low as I said before at the timing and uh, that's when we pump uh, voltage that way so it pushes current that way but this has a voltage built up and uh, with uh, 5 volts at the supply there we're going to lose probably about 0.3 volts with the shot key diode we were losing about 0.6 volts with the uh, rectifier diode that I used before, 1N4001. Therefore, I think we're gonna get about half of the voltage loss total uh, coming out that we did with the regular rectifier diodes. These don't handle current as well though, as I said before. 
that is a big drawback. There's other shocky dials that can handle more. So let's get back to the process. Charges like that, and then discharges. And again, we can keep this brief. We're just discharging it through another uh, shot keyed out into that capacitor. So it happens almost instantly. So we can be uh, low or uh, low with the 555 high for a brief period of time to charge that capacitor. Then we need to keep uh, repeating the process, charge that up and discharge because current's gonna keep coming out of here no matter what we do. Now, uh, we got the stored charge on that one. Uh, when uh, this one is done uh, discharging, we got the stored charge. That can charge again, won't affect the charge of this one. And um, then it heads uh, this way to this transistor. So while that one's charging, now this one's also charging right there. It is pulling current out of that capacitor, which is at a higher voltage than the supply voltage. So it pulls it into that, that one's charging, and that one's charging from uh, that direction and that direction. And then the output goes high again, it pushes current to recharge that one, but also the one that we just charged up, it pushes current uh, the other way right there so that their voltages add up again. So we got uh, almost two times the supply voltage when this is fully charged. And then now uh, we come to this capacitor so it uh, will charge up to almost two times the supply voltage. Remember we keep getting a little bit of drop each time. But then when we get to five there, we got that almost two times, almost 10 volts plus another five volts right there. And uh, so if these didn't drop any voltage, we'd have 15 volts out as long as we weren't providing any current. Each one of these though is gonna drop about 0.3 volts right there. So um, I think uh, maybe like 13 and a half or something uh, with, with a very, very light load. This one I think is gonna pull it down a little bit more. But in any case, we would have almost uh, twice whatever this is with uh, rectifier doubts most likely. So. We have uh, four green LEDs in series right here. So it starts up there, top one, and then each row. Um, anode, longer lead above the cathode, shorter lead down there, basic stuff. So if we had about uh, 10, 15 milliamps of current flowing through these, they would build up about three volts each. You would need 12 volts total. So um, this is gonna be lower current, um, I think like three or four milliamps total. With the circuit, we can measure the voltage across the resistor. It's a 1,000 ohm resistor. Each volt across it is one milliamp of current going through that circuit there. And uh, so um, they have the potential of dropping 12 volts, leaving three volts, three milliamps of current. If they're slightly lower, uh, it might be like slightly higher. But I think that's the range we're going to get. So now let's see how much voltage we actually get out uh, with this one. So I have the power supply set to five volts, a limit of 50 milliamps of current. And I actually had that already, but uh, when I was looking at the data sheet, these uh, Shockey dials here have a maximum, absolute maximum current of a pulse of uh, 50 milliamps of current. So we uh, are pushing this to the limit when we first apply power, but then uh, the amount of current is going to go down after that once this uh, capacitor starts uh, really charging and then the ones down the line are charged up we don't need as much uh, current flow but uh, we will need more than uh, three times the current coming in than is coming out so let's look at that I almost measured that backwards which is fine you just get a negative voltage on the power supply if you measure them backwards so power supply there you can see just shy of uh, 5 volts right there let's go to the capacitor which is parallel to the load you can see now we got about 13.1 uh, out right there. And uh, so a little bit lower than I thought it might be, but we're drawing current as well. That pulls it down a little bit. Let's look at the voltage across the LEDs. As I said before, we could expect up to about 12 volts, but that's at like 10 milliamps of current. The closer uh, you get to like one milliamp of current, the closer it gets to like 2.5 volts across uh, each of them. And it looks like we're a little bit above 2.5 volts each. Now, for the amount of current that's flowing through, 1,000 ohm resistor makes the math really easy. Each volt is one milliamp of current. So uh, that's 2.3 volts. We have about 2.3 milliamps of current flowing through here. So not much, um, but that's, uh, that's good news. We probably only have about uh, uh, seven and a half, you know, maybe up to like 10 like milliamps of current at times uh, going through that uh, shocky diode up there, uh, hopefully. So, because we're pushing the limits, the 15 milliamps is the absolute max. So we wanna stay uh, 
you know, usually you want to stay about halfway below the absolute uh, max. So um, maybe we are at that point now, which would be good. But uh, in any case, again, I uh, showed this build a lot in recent videos. Go check those out if you want a closer look at everything here. We just add another stage to the voltage doubler. You can just keep adding stages in this same way um, to get as high of a voltage as you want. But uh, like uh, these, I didn't realize how little current they could handle. I do have power uh, shot key diodes that can handle, I think, 15 amps. And, uh, but they're much larger and everything. But I would use them in a practical circuit and I'd have a bigger storage and everything. But uh, for uh, this demonstration purpose, I think this was a good uh, circuit. So I'm going to turn the power off, meter is off. See you in the next one.